Yo, what's up everybody, Akeem here, and in today's gaming news, Indiana Jones was originally meant to swing onto multiple platforms in his next video game, and one very dedicated Splatoon 3 fan is giving Nintendo peace of his mind. This is your Daily Fix. The upcoming Indiana Jones game was originally set for a multi-platform release until Xbox's ZeniMax acquisition changed plans. Now, during today's trial between Xbox Activision and the Federal Trade Commission, Bethesda's Pete Hines revealed that Disney had an agreement with ZeniMax for a multi-platform AAA Indiana Jones game. After the Bethesda acquisition, the agreement with Disney was amended to transition the Indiana Jones game to an Xbox and PC exclusive. Now, Hines said the game is currently set to hit Game Pass on day one. Now, several emails and conversations shown during the trial added additional color to the decision to make Indiana Jones a platform exclusive. Now, Bethesda's Pete Hines said that he was told by Xbox head Phil Spencer that Bethesda should continue to look at title exclusivity on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, asked why Indiana Jones was ultimately amended, Pete Hines attributed it to quote, reducing risk and trying to get a degree of clarity. He said, quote, you're dealing with a licensor who is giving a ton of feedback on what you're making is going to add a ton of time to your scheduling. These agreements, you don't get to take as long as you want. You have a window of time in which you're going to release a game. You immediately have a clock that's ticking on you. Now, in short, while Bethesda has a degree of control over what happens with Starfield, it has much less control over Indiana Jones, which is owned by Lucasfilm. Now, Hines added, quote, truthfully, we also kind of like the idea of embracing bringing it to Game Pass and how many players we could get there. Now, first announced in 2021, the Indiana Jones game is coming from Machine Games developer of Wolfenstein, The New Order, and The New Colossus. Now, Machine Games is under the Bethesda ZeniMax umbrella, meaning it was included in Xbox's acquisition of the company. Now, the developers haven't officially announced platforms for the game, meaning Himes' comments today are the best indication so far of where players will be able to access Indiana Jones. Now, the game has been absent from Xbox's showcases since its announcement over two years ago. It's a long time. Bethesda's Todd Howard will serve as executive producer on the project, and Howard briefly mentioned the game in an interview last year saying it would be a mashup of different genres. Now, moving on, a Nintendo shareholder meeting was reportedly derailed by a Splatoon 3 player who used the Q&A session to complain about the perceived lack of boy character support. Now, as reported by Video Game SI, a series of posts from a Twitter user outline the events of the shareholder meeting. Now, when presented with the opportunity to ask a question about Nintendo's business performance, the Splatoon 3 player said he believes female characters got preferential treatment in the game. Now, he said, quote, the company has blatantly given the boys in Splatoon the cold shoulder, and I would like to see some improvement. In Splatoon 3, there is a lot more customization than the first two games, and there is a clear favoritism towards girl characters over boys. He's continuing to talk here, it seems. Quote again, it makes me extremely sad when people say, if you enjoy playing as a boy, then you won't enjoy playing Splatoon. That's probably how he sounded, I'm just gonna assume. Wow, people are saying that? Damn, that's crazy. Anyways, Nintendo's president apparently attempted to stop the Splatoon 3 player's complaint, saying the question was too long, but was unsuccessful as the individual continued. Once finished, he thanked them for playing Splatoon 3 and for sharing his opinion. Now, an individual on Twitter claiming to be the Splatoon 3 player said they sent several emails to Nintendo expressing their concerns and, upon not being listened to, bought shares in the company in order to gain an audience with company executives. Damn, you took it to the limit. Now, IGN has reached out to Nintendo for comment regarding the shareholder meeting disruption. Finally, today, Horizon Forbidden West players have discovered an in-game tribute to the late Lance Riddick, who played Silence in the series and passed away in March. 
As reported by Push Square, a Reddit user shared a screenshot of a memorial that players can visit in the Burning Shores expansion of Horizon Forbidden West. As seen in the image here, the memorial has Riddick's name floating in lights on a cliff overlooking the Hollywood sign. It can be found on the first island players visit in the northeast corner. Now, it's unclear when the tribute was added to Horizon Forbidden West, with many players adamant it wasn't there when they first played through the expansion. Now, as it was only noticed recently, it's possible Guerrilla Games added it in the 1.26 update that was released on June 20th. And that was your Daily Fix for Friday, June 23rd. Now that you're caught up on today's news, please check out the official welcome to Final Fantasy 16 trailer. I'm Kim Lawanson, and for all your gaming news, stay tuned to IGN.